Hello again, 10th grade. Um, I hope that your Monday went well and Tuesday's looking just as good. I am out on my front porch again, trying to enjoy the fresh air, but not being too close to all the trees that are blooming because this is usually the peak season for my allergies. What I wanna do after I pray with you guys is I want to share something from the book of Isaiah. And I will also give a song recommendation. And then I'm going to read a little bit from my favorite book, To Kill a Mockingbird. After that, I'll give the announcements for today. And then you'll be free to go again. Okay. So let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, thank you for your son. Thank you for his courage and his bravery and his determination humility and coming to live and to die on the cross for us. Thank you so much for your grace and your mercy that you give freely to us. I ask that you would bless our time together, even though we are apart. And I ask that you would protect not just the physical bodies of these students, but their hearts and minds as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so... Um, the passage of scripture that I want to read to you guys is from Isaiah 55. So if you happen to have your Bible or a Bible app and want to turn there, you can, or you can just listen. I'm going to read this to you. And then there's actually a song that connects with this piece as well. It says, come everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from the earth, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so that my word be, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn, shall come up the cypress instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle and it shall make a name for the lord an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off Amen. all right so our little bit from to kill a mockingbird um, this is one of if not my absolute most favorite book um, of, of all time. It's one that I keep going back to. I know I said that about The Hiding Place yesterday, but I, I like this one even more. Um, and some of you all are getting to read that in 10th grade. There's a certain episode, so you've got to understand that this is set in a small town in Alabama, and you have a man named Atticus Finch, um, and he has two children. His wife died um, when they were very, very small, and he's a lawyer. And this is back in the 1930s. And so he is defending Tom Robinson, who is a black man, of something that he's been falsely accused of. He's been accused of raping a white woman. And Atticus stands up to do the right thing and defend this man, even though the whole town tells him he's wrong. 
and cause him awful names. His children don't understand what's going on. Scout gets picked on at school. And there's this really crabby old lady named Mrs. DuBose who keeps a Confederate pistol underneath her blanket um, in her lap while she's sitting on her porch. And she hollers out nasty apple things. And Scout and Jim can't stand her. Um, she insults their father, calls him all kinds of names that I can't call, say, on the internet. Um, and she is just a real pain in the rear end. And Jim and Scout end up having an argument right in front of her house. So she's one of their neighbors. They have an argument in front of her house. And Jim ends up taking one of Scout's toys. She has this baton. And he destroys her camellias, her flowers that she's very proud of. And so what Atticus does is he tells Jim and Scout that they have to go to read to Mrs. DeBose every single day. And so they have to go and they have to read to her. And at first it's just supposed to be for an hour, but they notice that the clock keeps changing um, and it's lasting longer and longer. And Mrs. DeBose is just cranky, but then it gets to a point where it's almost as if she's not listening to what she's, uh, what they're reading to her. Eventually, Mrs. DeBose dies, and Atticus explains to Jim and Scout that Mrs. DeBose was trying to rid herself of a morphine addiction she'd been taking for pain for so long because she had been really sick, but she wanted to die without any kind of dependence on anything, even something to help her, even though she was sick. And so um, Atticus has this conversation um, with them about Mrs. DeBose. Jim is mad because she has left for him a box with one of her camellia blossoms in it. He's like, she won't just leave me alone. And Jim said, or Jim said, Atticus says, I think that was her way of telling you everything's all right now, Jim. Everything's all right. You know, she was a great lady. A lady? Jim raised his head. His face was scarlet. After all those things she said about you, a lady? She was. She had her own views about things, a lot different from mine, maybe. Son, I told you that if you hadn't lost your head, I'd have made you go read to her anyway. I wanted you to see something about her. I wanted you to see what real courage is instead of getting the idea that courage is a man with a gun in his hand. It's when you know you're licked before you begin but you begin anyway, and you see it through no matter what. You rarely win, but sometimes you do. Mrs. DeBose won, all 98 pounds of her. According to her views, she died beholden to nothing and nobody. She was the bravest person I ever knew. Jim picked up the candy box and threw it in the fire. That's where she had uh, put the camellia to get him. He picked up the camellia, and when I went off to bed, I saw him fingering the wide petals. Atticus was reading the paper. So um, this is a, a section that I actually have like marked in my book, among many others. And what I love about it is that Atticus really does capture um, kind of the essence of courage. It is not that you're going to win, but that you are fighting for something because it's the right thing to do. And I think, you know, you see that in Christ going to the cross, even though he won, there's a sense in which, you know, he died. He didn't just take an easy victory. He sacrificed everything, all of himself. And you see in the garden where he's absolutely tormented by this fear, not just of the physical pain, but of the, se the, the separation um, from God that in rejection and, and anger that he was going to experience for us. And yet he decided to go ahead and do it anyway. And you see the Lord reward that. That's a victory that he does have. And so hopefully that gives you another image. I, I love how stories can help us picture things. And so I hope that that encourages you, not just in thinking about Easter, but in thinking about just our everyday lives, um, the different things that we're trying to conquer right now um, and that we may or may not do perfectly. And so I hope that that thought on bravery encourages you. Now, I'm going to uh, tell you about the song that 
relates to the passage from Isaiah that I read to you guys. So again, we have something from Mr. Peterson. I won't just recommend things by him. He does write some folksier, slower things, um, but I also, I listen to more music than just that one kind. But the Sower's Song is um, named kind of after that uh, passage of scripture, and it'll probably conjure images of the parable of the sower in your mind as well. But it's just a really good reflection song for um, this week. All right. Um, so today, what I want you to do is work on your creative assignment that's due uh, by 1130. Again, you can message me in the chat or email me if you have questions. Continue reading your individual novels and make sure you're taking notes. And then the discussion post is due Thursday. I know some of you have already started responding to that. Um, that's good. If you haven't done your initial post already today, you want to make sure that you do that so that people have time to respond to um, hopefully everybody's, you know, repost. You only have to respond to people, but if everybody responds to two people, hopefully that means everyone gets a response to their own post. And again, your open book quiz is on Monday, April 13th. So again, today, I'm really just trying to get you to focus on your reading. I know some of you have already finished your novels, so that gives you a breather elsewhere. If you want to start reading Old Man in the Sea ahead of time, you can, um, but that's a really short piece. Um, if you wanted to go ahead and start reading Great Gatsby, it's a little bit longer. That's up to you guys, um, and I'll communicate more on my plans for those when we get back from Easter. I hope you all have a wonderful day, um, that you get to have some little bit of festivity somewhere um, in the mix, and I will talk to you all um, tomorrow. Okay, so have a wonderful day.